What up, cucks? It's your boy, the hater, up in this piece. And I wanted to talk about the little feud between Jay and Jimmy Uso. Now, I will start off by saying that considering what this is, they're doing a good job. However, considering that it's WrestleMania, I don't give a shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a damn at all which Uso comes out on top. Because first of all, it's probably going to be Jay. And if it's not, it's going to be Jimmy via some sort of screw job. Good for either one. I don't care. This is not a WrestleMania worthy match. This is not even a pre show worthy match. At least it's not Gunter versus Jay Uso. And maybe Gunter can have like a meaningful feud so he can, you know, say he did something this year. Because let's be real if you look at Gunter's place on the card last year, it's exactly the same. And if all indications are true, Drew McIntyre is going to win the Elimination Chamber, which, to be honest, I don't really see that happening, but I guess that's the thing that makes the most sense because he's just, like, too much of a jobber to win it. But whatever, it is what it is. Let's say Drew McIntyre wins. He's in a higher spot on the card than Gunther, who beat him last year at WrestleMania. So that really goes to show you that you could just be Drew McIntyre and do basically nothing and still be higher up on the card than Gunther, who has done very little this year. I mean, he's won a few matches against the likes of Chad Gable, but, like, nobody cares, you know what I mean? So anyways, back to the Usos, cuckolds. The point here is this, right? Nobody cares who wins or loses because there are no consequences to either winning or losing, right? Will one of them win? Sure. Will one of them lose? Sure. Will we know the difference? Likely not. They're twins, cucks. This will be, I'm sure, the first time twins wrestle at WrestleMania against each other, unless Nikki Bella and Brie Bella did that once, which also nobody should care about. But the point is, this match is a great indicator of the state of wrestling and the state of WWE. I mean, let's be honest, right? Who wants to watch this? Nobody. I mean, one Uso is bad enough, but it's going to be two guys with the same exact move set doing the same exact moves. And I'm supposed to care, and I'm supposed to be like, Oh, I hope Jimmy wins. Oh, I hope Jay wins. I don't care who wins, and nobody really does, right? This WrestleMania, just like the last few WrestleManias, is going to hinge on one or two matches. This one, in my opinion, hinges on half a match, and that is it hinges on the, on the question, on two questions. Whether or not Roman Reigns is going to win, or whether or not The Rock is going to do something. That's it. Other than that, I couldn't give a shit. Like, the entire two nights of WrestleMania, for me, can be summed up in a 15-minute segment. I don't care what Sami Zayn is going to do. I don't care what Jimmy Uso is going to do. And when I say I, I mean nobody does. Nobody really cares about any of this at this point. The truth is what the truth is. And this WrestleMania is looking whack. Now, as if this weren't bad enough, which in my opinion it is, we also have Jimmy and Jay Uso in the main event of Raw. This thing closes Raw. The feud between Jimmy and Jey Uso closes Raw. Now, I know that WWE wants to put forward the notion that the Usos are one of the best tag teams of all time. I personally think they cannot be, right? Like, their success is not because they're a good tag team or anything along those lines. Their success is almost entirely contingent upon the fact that they're hitched to Roman Reigns. If they weren't, they'd be in a spot in the card like like Gallows and Anderson are, right? Like, they would be like complete nobodies. Nobody would care at all. And that's the truth. You know, like, good for them that they happen to have a family of talented wrestlers that are getting pushed and they get, you know, dragged along with them. But the truth is the truth, right? We don't particularly care about either Jimmy or Jey Uso. And if anything, you know, like, they can never be one of the world's best tag teams or one of the best tag teams of all times because of this drawback, right? Now, with all that being said, the question then becomes, what else, if anything, do we have to look forward to at WrestleMania? I mean, personally, I think it comes down to this. What role will Logan Paul play? That's pretty much it. What role, if any, will The Rock play? That's pretty much it. It's just a bunch of questions about what role people will play. Like, there's no one in the company, for example, that you can put Randy Orton against and have it be interesting, right? It's just not going to be interesting. The only interesting feud for Randy Orton would be like Cody Rhodes. And Cody Rhodes is out there stealing spots, you know? So it's like, because they've invested so heavily on only a handful, I would say two, but you can throw CM Punk in there as well. And one of them got injured, CM Punk. But they've only invested in Roman Reigns, obviously, and 
Cody Rhodes in the last few months, right? And, like, even though Cody Rhodes hasn't done anything for the whole year, like, they're making him seem big time by all the recent booking and the recent situations, right? And the fact that he won the Royal Rumble, which is, you know, a good way to make any jobber look decent. But the point is, nobody else feels like a WrestleMania wrestler, right? It feels like you have The Rock and Stone Cold, except, of course, instead of The Rock and Stone Cold, you have Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns. But it feels like you have, like, one match, and then it's just a bunch of Bull Buchanans wrestling each other. Like, I don't care at all, right? So you look at, like, Rhea Ripley. Like, what has she done with the belt, right? It's not enough to just be champion for a long time. You have to be relevant. And you're not just relevant because you're a champion. You have to do cool things. Like, I can't think of any meaningful feuds that Rhea Ripley has had for the last year. I don't think she's done anything, really. Right? The only other compelling thing left is what is, uh, what's his face? Damien Priest going to do, if anything, with his money in the bank, right? I mean, at this point, who knows? Maybe he'll cash in on Jimmy Uso <laughs> or for, for bullshit or something like that. Or he'll cash in on Gunther because nowadays, like, you can cash in on anything. So, I don't know what to tell you. But what I will say is this. Jimmy and Jay Uso, who together, right, were a tag team, and they would feud with, like, I don't know, Carlito and Epico or Primo, whatever, whoever, whoever the fuck it was, right, or Primo and Epico, any combination of those guys, like, the two Usos would be one half of a match, and even with two other guys, they would barely make it, if they were lucky, on the pre-show. And now, it's just the Usos, and they're going to have a match at WrestleMania. There was a point, especially when WrestleMania was a one-night event, where having a singles match at WrestleMania was legitimately an honor, right? It really showed where someone is on the card. So, you know, you have like something like the Andre the Giant Battle Royal and you put in like, you know, Mojo Rawley and like Baron Corbin there because it's like you have nothing for them to do. Like they're a waste of time. Then, then you had like your upper mid-card wrestlers like Kane, Benoit, for a long time, Orton, CM Punk, and these guys would typically have a match with each other, right? It would be a singles match. You'd get, like, Randy Orton versus CM Punk. You'd get, like, CM Punk versus Kane. You'd get Kane versus Randy Orton. You'd get all these things, right? All the different permutations of the upper mid-card, not quite their, their guys, right? Then in the main event, you had several main event caliber matches, right? Like, you had, like, the actual main event, right, which was only two guys, typically, sometimes three, sometimes four, but generally two guys that were in the main event, and then when we had two titles, you had the two title matches. And then you might care a little bit about the Intercontinental title and the tag team titles because it's WrestleMania, right? But beyond that, having a singles match at WrestleMania was considered a huge honor, right? Because it, it, it meant there's a difference between you and the next guy, right? A great example can be seen in WrestleMania 2000, right? The, the feud was Kane versus X-Pac, but they're like, all right, like Kane and X-Pac are not compelling enough, so we're going to throw in Rikishi and Road Dog because we're trying to push Rikishi. That's what happened, right? The match should have been Kane and X-Pac. But because they didn't consider it to be a good enough match, they made it a multi-man match, right? The Usos, Jimmy and Jay, are not at the level where they deserve this. I'm sorry, they're not, right? I will concede that considering what the situation is, Jay Uso has done the best he can with the whole yeet thing. Like, he's done the best he can to get over on his own, right? But it's not enough, right? And the storyline of the brothers hit each other you know, it's been like a year that they've been hitting each other, right? Not everything, cuckolds, has to be resolved at WrestleMania. It's okay to end a feud and a storyline at SummerSlam, right? And that's the idea that I was trying to convey, right? If you put the Usos at WrestleMania, and then in inevitably they're going to be wrestling each other at Backlash um, in the next several pay-per-views, I'm sure, um, that just kind of really shows that nobody cares, and when I say nobody, I don't mean just the fans, but I mean WWE doesn't care at all about any of the live events. It's pretty much WrestleMania, and maybe one of the Saudi shows, and I guess the, the Royal Rumble, right? Everything else is completely ancillary. Everything else is just another episode of Raw. You know, it's another episode of Raw that's a little bit longer. That's really all it is. There's nothing that you're getting if you watch, like, I don't know, Hell in a Cell, that you wouldn't get on Raw, except, I guess, the Hell in a Cell match. But nowadays, those matches are basically singles matches. They slam each other in the cell a couple of times, that's it. They're like, they use tables and these things that are not really Hell in a Cell type things, right? They don't use the cell. They don't climb the cell anymore. So I think I rest my case here. But the fact of the matter is exactly what I just said. That is, the Usos don't belong on the big stage. They don't belong there as a tag team and they don't belong there as singles uh, stars, right? And the fact is what the fact is. 
if you go along with WWE's premise that main eventing night one of WrestleMania is the same thing as main eventing WrestleMania, which it obviously is not, then, you know, what happened? The Usos were in the main event last year, and now they're going to be, like, on a fucking opening match or something, right? Probably, like, the second match on the card. You know, you don't... Nobody's going to care about this. Anyways, Cucks, take care of yourselves.